All right, so here's the long-awaited video on my hike. So for those of you who don't know, uh, I hiked 85 miles in the Pennsylvania mountains a couple of weeks ago. It took me about a full week to recover. And then I haven't put this video up because there's going to be some things in it that are some hard truths that I think some people aren't going to like. And I needed to get my crowdfunding video up for the drag strip so that in case my account gets shut down or my page gets blasted by Zuckerberg, I at least still had that up. So uh, I hiked 85 miles in the Pennsylvania mountains, like I said, and uh, I dealt with thunderstorms, lightning storms, torrential rain, rock slides and trees came down around me, um, just through rattlesnake and bear country, dealt with stifling heat during the day and hypothermia at night, like legit hypothermia at night. And I did the whole thing eating about 900 calories. So my goal was to do it without eating any food. Uh, that didn't quite work out. I made it the first two days, didn't eat a bite. And then afterwards, I ate, uh, like I said, about 900 calories for the course of six days. And a lot of that was at night just to build body heat. Uh, and a lot of people have asked me why I did this. I'm 50 years old, a bit overweight, a lot out of shape. And uh, a lot of times when guys do stuff like that, the first inclination is for everybody, oh, it was a midlife crisis. Well, I asked my son about midlife crisis a little while back for something else that I was doing. And he thought about it for a second, and he said, no, a midlife crisis is when guys get to be 50 or 55 and they realize that they haven't done any of the things that they wanted to do, so they panic, and they try to cram all the things that they wanted to do into a real short period of time. I said, yeah, that sounds about right. And he said, well, you've always done the things that you always wanted to do or that other people wanted to do. You're just 50 now instead of 30. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. Uh, so was it for the challenge? Not really. I've kind of done this hike before. In fact, I've hiked this trail three times. I've completed it twice. Um, and the last time was I was in really good shape. I was in CrossFit shape last time. So that wasn't really it. So then the question is, why did I do it? The reason I did it is because a really, really good friend of mine, one of my best friends, pissed me off. He's very left, politically, and I am very not. So we don't talk politics together. In the run-up to the last election, though, we had a couple of little conversations. And he said something that just floored me. And I really hadn't figured out how to deal with it. And I haven't really talked to him about it. But what he said is that with my bourbon and my cigars and my women, I'm privileged. And I come from a place of privilege. And because of that, I'm able to do things that other people can't, and I need to realize that. Now, I know all my conservative friends are freaking out right now because they had the exact same reaction I did. In that sentence, what he did was completely dismissed everything I've ever done, everything I've ever accomplished in my life, everything I've worked for, as being nothing more than opportunities that were thrown at my feet for no other reason than I'm a white heterosexual male. And that all I had to do was decide what I wanted to pick up and then let other people who were less fortunate fight over the scraps. And what's so annoying is that he knows my story. He knows I worked summers on my uncle's farm when I was a kid, and I had $3,600 saved up by the time I turned 16. And back in 83, or excuse me, 86, that was a lot of money to have for your first car. He knows I worked my way through school. He knows I never had less than two jobs all the way through college. I graduated without any student debt. And because I worked so hard, I also had a brand new 93 Dodge Dakota pickup truck that I bought. I bought a ton of hunting gear, a lot of it I still have. I bought a ton of high-end backpacking and fishing equipment and hiking gear. A lot of it I still have. I bought professional grade camera equipment that I used for over 20 years as a professional writer and photographer. And my son is still using some of it. So it was all high-end stuff. It wasn't cheap. He knows I paid my own car insurance. He knows I paid for my medical insurance after I dropped off my parents' policy. 
He knows that I took one day, one morning off of work, drove to Indianapolis, handed out resumes to every car, every car guy that I could find that worked for a magazine. I walked up to him, I said, hi, I'm Brad Ocock, I want your job. And I handed him a resume. That directly led to me getting hired by car magazines a couple years later. He knows that I went to work for Mopar Muscle. We got bought by Peterson. And in short order, I became the youngest editor and the fastest rise to editor, second fastest rise to editor, in the company's 65 year history. He knows I went to work for another company, Buckaroo Communications, that was a great company. We were the best writers in the industry. We changed the magazine industry for cars. I worked at year one. Then I went freelance for almost 10 years, doing pretty well for myself. And during that time, I started the Northeast Georgia Swap Meet. He knows that during the formative years of that show, I didn't make any money. I lost money every month. And after several years, I started breaking even. He was with me a lot of the times at a lot of shows where I handed out flyers. He knows that I handed out over 100,000 flyers over the course of 10 years to grow that show. He knows what I'm doing now. And with that one sentence, he just dismissed it all as, well, I'm privileged. So it was no big deal. It was easier for me than anybody else. And I can't really blame him for it. The people I blame for that mentality are the victim hustlers. Now, there are two kinds of people in this country who will try to convince you that you're a victim. The first is the people you associate with. They want to convince you you're a victim because they don't want you to climb out of it. Because misery and poverty both love company. And if you climb out of it, that just shows that their own decisions and their actions are holding them back. But if you're all being held back, then there's no good example to follow. So then obviously you must all be victims. The other group of people that's trying to hold you back are frankly the politicians. They want to convince you that you're a victim. You can't do anything because of your color, or your gender, or your sexual orientation. And they're going to fix it for you, brother. All you got to do is vote for them, support them, and they'll make everything right. The problem is, is that they haven't. The other problem is, they can't. Because it's your choices and your decisions that determine where you're going to be in life. And that's just all there is to it. So when my buddy told me that, I decided to make a point. And the only way I could think of to do that was to go out and do the hardest, most difficult thing I could think of doing. And that was being overweight, out of shape, 50, and go hike 85 miles in the Pennsylvania mountains. I wanted to do it without eating any food. That didn't work. But the rest I did. And the reason I did it without, or the reason I couldn't do it without any food, wasn't for any reason other than I couldn't do it. That's just the way life is sometimes. But I kept going on. I persevered, which is a stupid word, but I gutted it out and I didn't quit. I wanted to quit. I really did. It sucked. Every step of the trip sucked. I wanted to quit at 20 miles. I wanted to quit at 30 miles. At, at countless points, I was counting my steps so that I would go more than 15 or 20 steps without taking a break. The whole trail, it just sucked. But that's what life is. And I finished it. And I finished it not because I'm white, not because I'm a male, not because I'm heterosexual. I finished it because I set a goal for myself and I didn't quit until I achieved the goal. That apparently is lost. Now we have people telling you, oh, you can't succeed in life because math is racist and because being on time and punctual is racist and everything is misogynistic and 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 all they are doing is guaranteeing you that you believe you can never 
climb out of where you are. You believe that you'll never be a white collar worker. You'll never be a lawyer. You'll never be a doctor. You'll never be a teacher. Why are they telling you all this stuff? For their own power. If the schools suck because they suck, then the teachers associations and the teachers are a problem. But if they suck because it's systemic racism, well, then we can get more schools built and we can get more classes built and we can get more teachers hired and we can get more paralegals hired and we can get extra principals hired and we can get more funding. And then they've got more political power and they've got more clout and they've got more people on board with their agenda. Meanwhile, nothing's fixed, nothing's changed because all they've done is told you that you're a victim and you believe it. It's bullshit, every bit of it. If you can't get ahead in life, it's because of your decisions. If you don't like where you're at, you need to take a Sharpie marker and go into your bathroom and write the problem on your bathroom mirror and look at it every day and fix what you don't like. If we don't do this, it's never going to change. And if people don't figure out that they're their own worst enemy, it's never going to change. And if people don't start calling out the victim hustlers and the race baiters for what they are, charlatans and hucksters, it's never going to change. Now, I know from having a lot of people talk with me, a surprising number of people talk with me, that they like what I write on my Facebook page. They like what I say. But they can't share it. They can't even publicly like it. They can't comment on it. And they can't because they're afraid of having repercussions. I understand that. I'm a business owner. When I post things, I know that there could be repercussions. I've had my page shut down. I had my business page shut down for sharing a meme on my personal page. Facebook went after my business. And I understand that. And it's not going to make me stop. I firmly believe that if you condemn something or criticize something in private, but support it in public, you're just as big a problem. So if you agree with this video, share it. If anybody bitches, and somebody will, ask them where I'm wrong. Ask them to be specific. That usually screws people up. They can't be specific. It's time to harden the fuck up, America. Frankly, you're embarrassing us.